Was there um, a loan made but no loan agreement? Is there a loan agreement in place but there's no there's no minimum repayments that are being made? If it's a, is it a forgiveness or a payment? So really working that out because that's then going to feed into in what years the deemed dividends would have arisen um, and who the taxpayer is. Um, we should also be considering when we're doing this, are there other non-DIF 7A issues involved? Um, and can they, in some cases, um, uh, actually take precedence over um, DIF 7A? So you might have things like, there might be, is there, is there inter questions about interest deductibility? Potentially the PSI rules apply. And have we, have we got a DIF 7A or have we got a PSI issue? Um, is it FBT? Again, FBT or DIF 7A, mm -hmm. which one takes precedent? Um, and of course, with DIV 7A, particularly when you have trust involved, 100A, is there, is there a 100A issue here as well? Um, so I think you need to yeah, focus on the DIV 7A issue, but don't don't lose sight of these other issues that could be in the background that may impact on the strategy um, when we come to working out how we're going to deal with the issue. Um, next question is like, well, who is a taxpayer? Um, now, often this will be pretty straightforward, um, but if, for example, the loan was made to a trust, Who's the taxpayer in that situation? Is it the trustee? Is it one of the beneficiaries? Who's going to be assessed? We have to look at, um, is there, is there resolution? What the resolutions say? Are the default beneficiaries? Is there, has, it, has there been no effective distribution and therefore the trustee may be taxed? Um, and that then impacts on what the amendment period is, depending on who the beneficiary is that would, would be assessed on the deemed dividends. 